Hey guys, uh, happy Valentine's Day. Uh, we're going to be talking about the distributed property and another thing that it can do. Remember in class yesterday I said it, there's three important things that it can do. So today we're going to talk about factoring. Very important. You're going to be doing factoring for lots of years and different levels of it. So today's date is, you got it. 21419. Let's give a little heart to that date since it is uh, the day of love. I don't know about you. This video didn't get made last night because we were up making Valentine's. Valentine bookmarks. And then everybody decided they needed to be laminated. Oh, yeah. Late night. Anyway. Okay, so let's go back and let's review the distributive property. Distributive property. So to distribute is to share out. And we're going to share out that outside term to every term inside the parentheses. Now, one of the key things we talked about that makes the distributive property look different than the other properties, it's the only one with the two different operations. Very, very important. So let's talk about some ideas that uh, distinguish distributed property from other things. Um, there's always multiplication. Always. That's the guy outside, butted up to the parentheses. That's multiplication. So always multiplication. Next, we can have a choice of two of the second operations. So it's either adding or subtracting inside the parentheses. Oh, that's weird. I oh, just made that two words. Inside the parentheses. Okay. And then the whole point behind the distributive property is to remove the parentheses. So what we've talked about so far and what you practiced um, yesterday was how to remove parentheses. Okay. And what we did... is we multiply the outer term multiply the outer term by each term inside the parentheses now we've talked about this we can have more than one term inside um, there are more than two terms inside the parentheses, so we just keep multiplying that outside term times everything inside, inside the parentheses. Okay, so I'm going to just give you a couple of examples, and then we're going to talk about factoring. Now, I'm going to probably go on to uh, a next slide, but that doesn't mean we're going to be on the next page, Okay. So we should still be on the first page. Directions are just going to say simplify, because that's all that we can do. And we've got 5 times the quantity, x plus 5. And so what we're going to do is to distribute that 5, we're going to multiply it by each term inside the parentheses. Now, if you remember yesterday, I talked about what I'm showing you right now as being the brain step okay so this is what your brain is doing uh, when you're simplifying okay now the operation that you put in between the terms is going to match the operation that was inside the parentheses then I'm going to multiply 5 again but this time by the 5 now again this part should be mental math you should be able to say 5 times x is 5x, and 5 times 5... Oops, I wrote x a second time. Sometimes my brain. And 5 times 5 is 25. So you should be able to go from the original problem 
which by the way you want to write down to the solution okay so I'm gonna put stars next to the two things I should be seeing minimally in your homework okay every time I ask you to do something with simplifying this is what I should be seeing now you can add that middle step if you feel more secure as you're getting used to the process I have to say those of you with order of operations who who numbered what you were going to do next actually did really well so that was very helpful okay let's try this one 12 times the quantity 2x plus 7 Ooh, ooh. got a coefficient on our variable cool okay same process we're going to multiply the 12 times the 2x so we're going to have 12 and then times the 2x so this is the brain step and then it says plus, so we're going to write plus. Ooh. And then we're going to distribute and multiply 12 times the 7. Let's see if I write it correctly this time. Yay! Now again, this is your brain step, and now you're going to do the actual math. So let's see, 12, I can multiply it by 2, that's 24, but I can't do anything with the x, so it's just going to be part of it. And then 12 times 7 is 84. Now notice I can't do anything more and I stop because I cannot add something that has an x to something that doesn't have an x. And again, I'm going to star. I have to see the original problem and I for sure need to see the result. Okay? Now, <clears throat> I'm going to go to the next screen just to give myself full room. You need to still stay on the same page. Everybody understand? All right. Let's move along, puppies. So let's talk about factoring now. Okay, so what the on earth is factoring? And I said this is related to the distributive property. So what is it? So here's the definition of factoring. You're going to rewrite an algebraic expression so remember, when we say algebraic, it has a variable as part of it. Expression means there are uh, operations involved, okay? So for example, an algebraic expression would be like 24x plus 84. That was the answer we just got to the last example. But instead of writing it expanded like that, we're going to write it as the product of its factors. Okay? And so what we're going to write is 12 times the quantity 2x plus 7 in the parentheses. Okay? So, question is, how do we go from 24x plus 84 to 12 times the quantity 2x plus 7? So, what you need to pay attention to is, what the heck is that 12? Well, if you look at 24 and you look at 84, and you ask yourself, hmm, what's the greatest common factor? So, that's what we're going to be dealing with, and that's the 12. So, we're going to look for the GCF, and it's going to get multiplied by the remaining expression. And I'm going to put that in parentheses. Oh, lots of, lots of humps there on the M there. That's weird. Let's try that again. So we're going to factor out the GCF to the front. And when we divide that factor from each of the terms, that remaining expression is going to go in the parentheses. Okay? This is so cool. Now, sometimes people get a little confused with the term factor out. This isn't take it out and throw it away. That's a mistake I see still sometimes even with my algebra kids, right? So it was something they didn't quite grasp when they were in early grades. So when we factor out, that means to the outside, not into the atmosphere where nobody sees it anymore, right? To the outside. 
factor out to the outside the GCF of the terms. So 12 and 24 and 84 had 12 is the greatest common factor. And we'll remind ourselves how to do this. And I'm going to show you a strategy we used back with GCF, how cool it is. So then the remaining expression, so in this case the 2x plus 7, remains behind inside parentheses. So here's what's happening. When we factor, the process removes the parentheses, or when we, excuse me, when we distribute, the process removes parentheses. When we factor, we put the parentheses back in. So let me take you through that problem using an old friend called the factor ladder. The layer cake, you name it, whatever. So what we do is look for terms that uh, the 24x and the 84 have in common. Now, <clears throat> they don't both have an x, so I can't pull him out, though that is something that can get factored in other problems. But I do notice that... Um, they're even, so I could pull out a 2. So the result is going to give me 12x plus 42. But I notice that the two terms are still even, so I could pull out another 2. Okay, And then we get 12x divided by 2 is 6x, and 42 divided by 2 is 21. And here's where it gets a little tricky. Remember our old friend Stinky Threes? Gotta watch out for them. And guess what? Yep, there's a Stinky Three. Three goes into six twice, which is 2x. It's left over, and three goes into 21 seven times. Now, seven's prime, two's prime. I can't factor anything more. So here's what we're going to do. To figure out the GCF, we're going to take all those outside terms and we're going to multiply them together. So 2 times 2 times 3 and we get the GCF is equal to 12. Okay, So that's going to be bang, bang, in my answer. And then what's left behind that bottom expression is now going to get written inside the parentheses. How cool is that? Awesome. Okay, so let's write down a couple of statements and then we'll do a couple practice problems and call it a day. So GCF is the product of the vertical factors if this is the strategy you're using. Factors. So the two we pulled out, the two we pulled out, the three that we pulled out, we multiply them, that's what product means, and that's where we get the 12. Okay, so that's the first part. The second factor, so that's the one inside the parentheses. In the parentheses, is the expression at the bottom. Now, little warning. If you don't factor fully, then and get all the common factors out of the two terms, your answer's wrong. You might say, well, no, it still gives me what I started with if I multiply it. Guess what? No. It has to be the greatest common factor that you pull out. Okay? All right, let's do a couple of examples, and this should be on your page two. So here we go. Directions are going to say factor. The 
the expression. So I'm going to give you one that you're going to go, seriously, why are we factoring that? It's an expression. So I take the whole expression. I look for common factors. Some of you may say, hey, 4 goes in. That's fantastic. Factor it out. I'm just going to go baby steps. So let's see, 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. I still see that they're both even, so I'm going to pull out another 2. So remember we talked about how factoring works all sorts of different ways, just depending upon what you see. So let's see, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Oops, let me change my color there. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 4 divided by 2 is 2. All right, we've got prime numbers. So that's all we can do. So for my GCF, I'm just going to take 2 times 2 equals 4. So I'm going to write 4 and then times the quantity 3 plus 2. Now the reason why I give you this example is um, they give you some of these on your homework. So I want you to understand we're not going to add them together. We're going to factor. So let's try, ooh, this is an interesting one, 80 plus 56. Okay. So let's put the expression over here, put our wrong underneath it. Uh, I'm going to start simple again until I start recognizing maybe larger factors. Two can go into both of them. That gives me 80 divided by 2 is 40. 56 divided by 2 is going to give me, um, let's see, 28. Okay. And then, hey, look at that. I know it can go into both of those numbers. 4 can go into both of those numbers. So notice now that the numbers are a little smaller, I'm seeing factors a little bit better. And let's see, 40 divided by 4 is 10. 28 divided by 4 is 7. Oh, I got a meowing cat over something. All right, I know that 10 is pr or 7 is prime. Nothing more I can do, so I'm going to calculate my GCF by multiplying the 2 times the 4 and I get 8. So I'm going to write, my answer is going to be 8 times that remaining expression, 10 plus 7. Okay. Now again, this is an example of how you can do it. If you see the factor straight away, you could go from, and I'll start it, from the original problem to the answer, if you see the GCF straight away. Okay, so that choice is yours. So let's do one with some variables. So we have 16 plus 4x. So again, I'm going to write it over here. Put my ladder in, and I notice 4 can go into both of those. So that gives me 16 divided by 4 is 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times x is x. All right, there's no other common factor, so that was pretty simple. GCF is just 4. So we're going to have 4 times the remaining expression, 4 plus x. All right, one more, and then we're done. <coughs> so we've got 36x plus 30. So I'll put it over here. I notice they're both, oh, uh, three can go into both of them, so let's pull a three out. That's going to give me 36 divided by three is 12. 12 times x is 12x, plus 30 divided by three is 10. Oh, look at that. The numbers are still even, so that means I can pull out a two. So then I get 12x divided by two is 6x. And 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now, 5 is prime, so I can't do anything with it. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate my GCF. It's going to be 3 times 2, or 6. So I'm going to take my GCF and multiply it by the remaining expression at the bottom. And I get my answer is 6 times the quantity, 6x plus 5. So there you have it. There's factoring. Have fun, guys. Bye.